what is up you guys welcome back to my youtube channel today we're going to get into part five of surviving my childhood abuse slash r word experience or as you could say trauma <laughs> um we had got into a little bit i'm gonna dive back a little bit and, and let's replay what we said in the last part four so we were in eighth grade we had went in over a couple years um and i was at aces now ACE is a behavioral school. I didn't touch base on that because I wanted to touch base on this before I went into high school. ACES was a behavioral school. Now, during my time at ACES, um, anytime we would get in trouble, we would get sent to FBI. Okay, FBI was um, like ISD in public school, basically, but it was 10 times worse. You can only eat a peanut butter sandwich. It was horrible. Um, a fruit which wasn't even that good, and a white milk carton. Now, <laughs> this time at the ACES, my eighth grade year was pretty dope, um, except, for, except for the time that I got in a fight. But before that, seventh and my ending of my sixth grade year, I was in ACES, and um, it was pretty messed up. So ACES is a place for behavioral kids, kids with disability, kids with autism, kids with ADHD, bipolar, all types of behavioral issues. Anytime we would either get in trouble or wouldn't listen in class, we would get sent to FBI. And in FBI, if you didn't do your work at the desk and face the wall, you would get put in timeout. They would make you face the wall into this blue mat. And then if you didn't face the wall into this blue mat, they would restrain you. They were required to restrain you because you weren't listening and you were being defiant. And this is how. They taught people discipline and how to listen. And I was like, I'm not facing this mat. Like, I don't want to look at this mat. So I would look around or whatever. And anytime I didn't listen, like they would restrain me and put my face on the mat. And they said, face the mat or we're going to restrain you again. Grown men were restraining me. I mean, these men were like 300 pounds to be exact. And I was like, 13, 12 years old. Please make that make sense. I don't think any child should ever, ever have to go through that, honestly. Um, now looking back at it, I'm like, that didn't teach me discipline. That taught me to fear, to even speak up for myself. It wasn't okay. That was literally child abuse. Okay, move on from that. Um, in between that time frame, we had lived with a family friend, um, and uh, with that family friend, we, before we moved, before I went into high school, we lived with that family friend. My uh, my um, my mom and her, they would they would clash a lot. They would argue a lot. There was a lot that went on between both of them. Both of them struggled with mental health, so it was it was very argumentative, and I would constantly still have to watch my siblings, and she would get mad that. Um, my mom would always be gone and I would have to watch my siblings. She'd be like, why is your mom always gone? And she would get really mad because she would always leave me alone to watch the kids. So it would really piss her off. And so uh, they ended up getting into a fight before we moved. And so they kicked us out. And um, her husband was her husband's usually the quiet one. He was like, I didn't want it to happen like that. But, you know, things happen. So... We ended up moving. We moved into the same apartments, and that's when I was like uh, 13, going to be 14, is when I was digging in the back of a trash can, I believe. Or did we live there, and then we moved in with them? No, that already happened. We moved in, we moved in with them afterwards. Then we moved into some other apartments back on Camel back in 27. There were these white apartments. I don't even know the name of them, honestly. They're not white anymore. They're purple. Uh, cause you see, you bought them out. I think they're actually something's built on top of it. Anyways, we moved there. This is my freshman year of high school. We're getting into freshman year of high school. Um, I had really great grades my eighth grade year. I stood out of trouble as much as possible. I wanted to get out of ACEs so bad. I did not want to go. I wanted to go to public school. I didn't want to keep going to freaking behavioral school. So I, 
I graduated eighth grade and I got A's and B's most of the whole year. I don't even think I got one C. I just had A's and B's the whole year. And I took summer school. And um, during summer school, me and my ex best friend, me, uh, I, this is the uh, best friend that I met during ACES during the time when I was in FBI. Um, we would giggle a lot and we would laugh and we would get put in timeout for laughing too much because we were disturbing the class. But you know, you know, when you got that one friend who that you just always laugh with, that anytime you guys look at each other, everything is funny. That was literally me and her. So <laughs> we just kept laughing and we got in trouble during summer school. Then uh, move on to high school. High school. During that summer, I graduated summer school. We went into high school, Alhambra. That's where I started. My freshman year was very chaotic because I was in football and um, I had just started high school. So I knew some people there already because of family, friends growing up and whatnot. Um, a lot of things happened my freshman year because I went to juvie again. And um, I try not to miss any classes during freshman year. My mom, this, this I think this is around the time, because it was in my sophomore year. This is around the time where I had my mom beat me soulless. First, it started with, let's go, let's go with juvie, because this happened during my freshman year. Um, I didn't really get sent to juvie. I got sent to a new relief program for kids with behavior issues or kids that parents don't want them, basically. And I got sent there for like a night because my mom didn't want me there. Now, we struggled in the house. Every time we would move to a house, we always struggled with roaches, bed bugs, and like all the time. So we would always end up getting bit. We had in this apartment, it was a two bedroom, one bath. I remember it because this is when I was older, so my memory is a lot better. Um, she, this is a time when my suicide, uh, taking my life attempts was bad. Um, there was only one time that she caught me, but I, this is around the time when I started cutting, when I started to like pretend to drown myself because I didn't want to be here. I started getting into poetry, so I started writing like about like not wanting to be here, the abuse. I have like notebooks about the abuse, and um, I just didn't want to be alive. This is not a time that I really, I just, I was such in deep depression. I was going through puberty, and just depression hit me really, really, really hard, and I did not want to be alive. Um, stuff was still happening to me, obviously, because uh, remember, I was still going to my friend's house every time that I would get drunk and I would sleep at her house. I was also in football, so I would always pass her house every time I would go to practice. And so there was times where she would leave to, for me to go babysit. The, like my mom would leave and I would have to babysit my, my siblings and I would take care of them. And then there was a time at nighttime where I think I had like roaches in my alarm clock my alarm clock was never an issue first of all we had no beds we slept on the carpet and the carpet even had bed bugs so we would get bit and everything so but the alarm clock would wake me up for school so it's the only thing that really woke me up because she wouldn't wake me up and i wanted to be on time i wanted to make sure that i was at school at the right time because i would have to walk to school or take the bus and so she told me that I had to throw out the alarm clock, and I was like, why? I, she was like, it has roaches when trying to get rid of bugs. And I was like, it wakes me up in the morning. Are you going to get me another one? Like, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, throw, you're not going to come inside until you throw it out. And so she basically locked me out of the house and said that she wouldn't let me in unless I threw it out. And I said, I'm not going to throw it out. I have to wake up in the morning. Like, are you serious? I was like, can I go inside? And this was at nighttime, guys. This is nighttime. Like, I'm trying to go. I was like, I just want to go to bed. Like, I have school in the morning. And she was like, nope, you're not going to. And then she was like, she made it in this thing. This is when I started, like, really, like, standing up for myself a little bit. Not too much, but standing up for myself. And I was like, can you let me in? And she's like, nope. And she, like, locked the sliding door. And so I went over there to my brother's room because my two brothers share the room. And I knocked on the window and my and my my young, not my youngest brother, but my second, like 
the one that's closer to my age, I was like, Evie, Evie, Evie. And he was like, what? And I was like, I was like trying to wake him up. And I was like, open the window for me. Cause I was trying to hop in through the window. And I was like knocking on the window. I was like, Evie. And I was trying to wake him up. And then he woke up and he opened the curtain and he was going to open the window for me. And then my mom stepped out of the sliding door and she's like, don't you dare open that door. Don't you dare open that window for Mary or I'm going to beat your ASS. And he's like, I'm sorry, Mary, I can't let you in. And I was like, it's okay. And I was like, still knocking on the window. And I was like, Carlos. And I was trying to call my other little brother. I was like, open the window, open the window, open the window, which is Manny. But I was like, open the window, open the window. And he, he wouldn't wake up. He was like a deep sleeper. And so I kept knocking on the window. I kept trying to like open it. Eventually the window broke, right? The window broke. I still have scars. Um, actually, it was this hand. I have a scar right here that cuts through that um, when I was knocking, the glass, the, it broke because it was really thin glass. You know, in those apartments, they, the windows are not really that strong. It was thin glass and my hand went through it. And so it cut me, it cut my, my hand right here. And she was like, I'm calling the cops. So she called the cops. She told the cops that I was trying to take my life. She literally told the cops I was trying to take my life and that she needs me to go get help or like she needs to send me to, to a new relief because she can't deal with that right now. And, um, I was trying to cut myself and da 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 and, and it, the cop looked at my my hand on my wrist and you could tell that the way the the glass cut wasn't diagonal it was up and I was like and I told the cop and I was like I was like I, I was like is she kidding me like what do I need to take my life for right now I was like I'm trying to go to bed she wants me to throw away my alarm clock like I'm trying to go to school in the morning I literally have school and I was like is she gonna pick me up for school I was like, can I have a bus pass or something so I can go to school from the new blue new leaf program or whatever? He's like, I'm sorry. He's like, you seem like a good kid. Like it was some cop and he was like having give me this, you know, big life speech about how like I seem like a good kid, you know, I could do better or whatever. I'm like, dude, like are you kidding me? Like I'm not really trying to take my life right now. It is way too late for me to go through things right now. Um so then there is another incident where me and my brother we were watching Lord of the Rings. Listen, my, so this is when VC, we had a VCR player and we had cassette, like we had the VCR, like Lord of the Rings movie. And so I put that, put the movie in and I put it really low and I had my brother Evie in my room with me. And like, we weren't allowed to watch TV after a certain time. And so like, oh, actually no, I could watch it all night, but he wasn't allowed to watch Lord of the Rings. And he was like eight, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 he was 14. So he was like, nine or ten he was all he was older because we're five years apart he was like nine or ten and uh nine he was nine he was nine because we're five years and so and he, um my mom knocked on the door and was like mary and i was like huh and he's she's like is evie there and i was like yeah he's like tell him to go to sleep i said he can't watch that movie and he needs to go to sleep i said okay and then i was like just pretend to be asleep or whatever and so i was like whispering to him and he um, he was like, okay, he's like, I don't want to get in trouble. And I was like, you won't get in trouble, you're good. And so I would protect my brothers, obviously. Anytime that, like, this is the time where, like, anytime that she would try to beat them, like, I would always stand up for them. Or, like, if food went missing and it was them, I would stand up for them and I would get beat for it. You know, the older sibling always get, goes through that. And so she, I was like, okay, so she went back. She noticed the TV was still on because she told me to turn off the TV, but we were like still watching Lord of the Rings. And so she's like, Mary, I told you to turn that damn TV off. And she got so pissed. And I was like, it is off. She's like, you think you run in this house? And I was like, no. And then I was like, I turned it off and I was like, pretend to be asleep. <laughs> so my brother's pretending to sleep and he's like, <laughs> I remember because, okay, so the abuse wasn't funny, but just the whole encounter that area was like hilarious because we really tried to pretend like we was we was playing it off and i was like he's sleeping what are you talking about she's like i heard him talking and i was like no it's like you think i'm stupid and so she like she this woman anytime i would lock the door she's like open the door now open the door and i was like no you're gonna hit me she's like open the door now and i was like no you're gonna hit me like you think i'm just gonna open the door knowing damn well like you're about to like beat me because she had the belt in her hand and so she opened the door she threw the belt down and she like got a screwdriver or a butter knife i don't know what she used but this woman took the whole door off it like off the like she took the whole doorknob apart and like like 
opened it, like everything, and then smack, slammed the door open. She's like, you think you're right? Da, 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 da. She grabbed my brother by his hair, and I was like, don't grab him like that. And then I, like, I literally tried to grab him because I was like, don't touch him like that because I got so mad. I was like, don't touch him like that. He didn't do anything. He's like, you think you're running? And she shoved me. She grabbed my box TV because this is when I had the box TV. She grabbed the box TV and she threw it at me and she shoved it at me. And I was like, what the hell? And then she's like, she's like, you think you run? Shit? And then she grabbed me by my hair and she like dragged me and she like, like smacked me. And she's like, don't ever do that again or whatever. You don't run. And you don't want, she was, obviously she was cussing a lot. She, you don't want anything in here in this house. And I was like, okay. And I was like crying. And I was like, I was like crying, like really crying because she like basically broke my TV. I didn't have a TV after that. And then um, next incident is when um, her friend came over. And this is this is a friend that used to babysit me when she was in security back when I was in before I went into the system. Um, so she knew me since I was like six and six or seven, uh, six when we first came to Arizona from Mexico. So she was like, she, she was braiding my hair. Cause I was like, can you braid my hair? Cause I really liked, I wanted the braids. Like I really wanted my hair braids or braided or whatever. She's like, of course. And so she, she was braiding my hair and she was braiding part of it. And I was like, I'm really hungry. And she was like, go get something to eat. And I was like, no, like she's cooking. Like she won't let me get anything in. She's like, why would she stop you from eating? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, she's like, girl, go get something to eat. And I was like, I'm scared. <laughs> and there was watermelon. I was like, can I get some watermelon? She's like, no. And she's like, you know what? Don't listen to her. She's like, she was literally, she told me, she was like, don't listen to her. She's like, grab some watermelon because she went to go use the bathroom. And I was like, okay. And so I went to go grab some watermelon from the refrigerator. And she caught me. I was so scared. She caught me. She's like, do you really think you, you can just run in here? I told you I had not to get no damn food. Da, 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 da. And she grabbed me. She shoved me against the wall. And she started beating my ASS. Like when I mean she was beat, she was beating me in the corner with a belt, like just swamping it, just ja, ja, ja. Like she didn't care what she was shooting. She was hitting my legs, my arms, my my back, my my stomach, my head. She didn't care what she was hitting. And I was just like curled up in the corner. And I was like, stop, stop. And I was trying to like grab the belt because like I didn't want her hitting me. And so she like started smacking me. Because if she if I grab the belt, she'll start smacking me. And this woman, I was younger, she was strong, okay? This woman had strength on her. I don't know where she got that strength, but she has some strength and she has some heavy hands. And so um, I kept trying to grab the belt. Like, I was trying to dodge the belt. I was in there trying to play, like, I was in a boxing ring or something. But this woman smacked the crap out of me. And so I let her beat me, and I just stood down. Because if I got up, if I did anything, if I laughed, I would have to cry. And if I cried too much, she would tell me to shut up. And if I laughed, she would keep beating me because she would get more mad that I was laughing. So I had to make sure I cried enough for her to stop. And I didn't cry too much for her to keep, you know, like, to like telling me to shut up or she was going to beat me again. You know, like I had to be in the middle because she, if anything made her mad, whether if it was too much crying or if it was me laughing at her hitting me. Because sometimes I would laugh because I was just sick of it. I just started laughing when she would hit me and she would say, you think this is funny? She would keep hitting me over and over and over. She wouldn't stop until I started crying. And then that's when she was like, okay, you know, but she hit my head against the wall a couple of times while she was beating me. And like, she grabbed me by my hair. And then I got up, I got up after she got done beating me. She was walking, she was walking backwards. I got up and she's like, oh, you're trying to square up? And I said, no, 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 I was just trying to get up. And she did it again. She's like, Mah. She like she just smacked the crap out of me. She slammed my head against the wall with like my hair, and she was like, "Try to scrub to me again." Da 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 da. She's like, "You think I'm gonna fight you like one of these bees in the street?" And I'm like, what? "So I just crawled. You know, instead of getting up, I crawled my way back to my room, and I was just crying. I was in the room just crying and crying. And after that, well, my friend, my mom's friend, watched the whole thing, and she was like." Why would you do that to her? She was literally trying to eat. Like you beat your daughter for trying to eat. That is so foul. That is horrible. And she got she was she got so mad at her that she was upset. She was crying. She was like, "That you just made me cry for her. Like, why would you do that?" And she's like, 
And she, and then she told her, she's like, you beat your kids too. I've seen you beat your kids. She's like, but not for eating. And so she got up and she's like, she's like, I'm leaving. I can't watch this. I can't, I can't watch this at all. She's like, this, I can't believe you would do that. And so she, she walked, she left, she grabbed her kids and she left. And it was her two, two, two or three of her kids. But she grabbed her kids and she left. And she was like, don't call me, don't text me. Like, I, I don't need to be around this. And so obviously they still hung out later on after a year or whatever. But then um, let's move on. There's still, there were still like times where I got beat and everything like that because there was times where my brother so carlos is manny so his name was carlos before he changed it to manny so manny he he would he would get scared to sleep alone at night especially with with evie sometimes because he would wet he would wet the floor or he would pee and he would ask to sleep with me and i was like okay and so there was a time where um him and my brother evie were fighting or him and destinies were fighting because destinies at the time was like one or two and um grabbed the belt my mom grabbed the belt and she was like give me the belt she told evie because he she would always use evie to to grab the belt so he's like give me the dang belt and he's like and he was like no 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 he's like i'm sorry i'm sorry and he was so scared of my mom like manny was so scared of her he would like shake every single time and i would always like get in front of him and i was like you're not gonna hit him you're not gonna he's like she's like you think you're tough and i was like you're not gonna hit him i was like, i'm not gonna let you hit him and so i was like i was like stand behind me and i was like i'm not gonna let her hit you and so i would literally stand in front even though i was scared i would rather get hit than watch my baby brother get hit the way she would hit me and i was like i'm not gonna let her hit you and he told me even now he was like i remember you standing in front of her and not letting her hit me you know because he was little he was fragile he was so skinny and bone like you're gonna hit him like this kid barely has bones on him and like he's a child you know what i'm saying and so like anytime like that type of stuff would happen or my brother evie i would just get so mad because because so my brother was my brother's autistic and um so he got diagnosed autism when he was like eight or eight eight or seven eight actually and then you know so he already had his diagnosis and so he he has a learning disability he can't learn he has a learning and it, and um what else younger in his head like way younger and so she would always use him and it would piss me off you know I, when I'm, I'm a kid so i'm not really thinking about his, his disability so i was just so pissed and i was like one time like he she would always always tell him go get the belt and she would get he would get the belt he would get the belt anytime that i would fight with him she would go she would be like grab the belt i'm gonna be here and so all the time and i'm like you know what whatever i'm gonna grab the belt for him too because i'm always getting beat or whatever so me and him would clash because we were so close in age and like she would beat both of us but sometimes i wouldn't let her like beat him so it was it was times and i and growing up i bullied him a lot too because we're so close in age and she had a favor and it was him and it would piss me off how much like I didn't matter, but she had a favorite, you know what I'm saying? She also was making the most money from him. So that's why, you know, she would like favorite him a lot. And um, so on, let's get moving on to my quinceanera. It's uh, other things obviously happen. Like I, I'm still getting molested um, by my friend's brother and um, oh my foster dad I finally met my foster dad again and we met we met up we you know like I I saw his ex-wife and then I got my foster dad's information and so we started hanging out again and I I'd go over to his house and take the bus there or whatever whenever and so I invited him to my quinceanera and so he ended up going to my quinceanera that day of my quinceanera I didn't want a quinceanera but she forced me to have a quinceanera she said it's gonna and she would be like, it's going to look good. You're going to be happier, whatever. She really did the quinceanera to make herself look good. She wanted to look like a good parent. And so she made me a quinceanera. That day of my quinceanera, the morning of my quinceanera, she, we had a fight. Like, she beat, she beat my ASS on the day of my quinceanera. 
and say that she was going to cancel and she threatened my brother alex was there too um so he stood up for me he was not gonna he's like you're not gonna hit her like that why are you treating her like that he's like on his on her quinceanera too are you serious and so he got so mad he was emotional at the fact that she was doing that so me and him we had a crying session in my room and like he held me and like that was the very first time where like i had a real connection with my big brother because we never connected like that but he's like i'm sorry that that happened to you or whatever and i was like it's okay and so he's like, I'm sorry, I've been gone for so long because he went back to L.A. and he was gone for a while. And I would text him like I miss him. And we would text back and forth every now and then. And so he just felt bad that he was gone, that I had to go through what I had to go through. And so I went, my foster mom picked me up because of what happened, the situation. And I texted her. I was like, can you pick me up? And she's like, what happened? I was like, me and my mom literally just got in a fight and she wants me to leave. So my foster mom dropped me off at my quinceanera and my mom just set up my whole quinceanera. She acted like nothing happened. She tried to give me a lap dance that night on my quinceanera, my, my mom, my biological mom. And I was like, get off of me. By the way, we stole my mom's alcohol from that night after we get back my, from my quinceanera, me and my friends, like I had some friends from school and my ex-best friend from ACES, we went back to my house and them two, we, they slept over at my house and um, we stole my mom's wine and we stole some alcohol from the party and we got, we drank, we didn't get like drunk, drunk, but we drank the whole bottle in my room and then we snuck out my window and we went into the pool and we went swimming. Actually, we went to the pool because it was a Wi-Fi area and we were just being like, you know, normal teenagers, as you can see, but we were doing the most. And so that's what happened my freshman year. My sophomore year, uh, during the summer, I went into, we went to like a kickback and um, I met this guy, this guy, he was, I think he was 18 when I met him and I was, I just turned 15. And so me and him started talking. I was like, I have a crush on him or whatever. Me and him, he was the first guy that I actually dated for like five months. That's the longest I've ever dated a dude. And so I told him that I like girls. And uh, this is a time where I was like struggling with my sexuality because I had already like, I told my like best friend that I like girls. I feel like I was bi, but I feel like I like girls more than I like boys. And so I started like just telling him like, obviously in the kickback, we'd like, I made out with a, like a couple, I have already experienced like kissing girls and stuff like that. So um, I actually started experimenting like, liking girls when I was like five and like you know my coming out story was a little bit longer and it was way before anything had ever like really occurred so I'm like 15 so I'm thinking I'm me I'm thinking I'm grown okay 15 I'm grown and eh, you know what I'm saying so I get into uh, being 15 I start going to church you guys I started going to church. I'm going to this Pentecostal church. This is where I said my life turn, make this switch turn. I actually started going to church during my freshman year, but I didn't really start like getting into the like the clothing until my sophomore year. I started wearing long skirts, whatever. And so that happened. I'm wearing long skirts or whatnot. And this 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 lasts for a whole year. And I'm really just, I'm trying to change and I'm sitting here trying to change my sexuality too, because I, I just feel like they're telling me it's a sin to be gay. So I'm like, like, wow, I have these like thoughts like about being with girls. So is it bad? Like, this is when I was questioning my sexuality, but I, I had a crush on this girl at my school. So I was like, I don't know, like, is it wrong to have this type of feeling? And they were like, in church, they would talk about it, how like, you know, I should be with the guy. So I dated him and I really liked him, but being with him made me feel really awkward like dating him was very awkward, like uncomfortable, awkward. I couldn't have that emotional connection that he was having with me. Like he would tell me he's in love with me and I was his angel and all of this. And I just felt so bad because I was like, how do I tell this man that I don't have those same types of feelings? Like, you know, and he was very sweet. He wasn't like bad to me. He was like really sweet to me. Got me a phone, would like come over, bring me Starbucks, bring me flowers. Dude treated me like extremely good. So that's when I knew, like, if this dude's treating me like a princess and I don't like it. So, like, because, like, I just felt so out of place. And I'm a tomboy, so I'm still playing football, whatever. 
a sophomore year. And then I'm in choir as well. This is when choir like really, really saved my life because being in music was a life changer. I'm in poetry. There was, I was in poetry slam. And when I, I started getting creative and writing more and getting really deep within myself. And um, this is when I stopped doing drugs for like a year. I stopped. I didn't drink. I didn't do anything in between that year span where I felt like my, my life was changed. <laughs> and so um, I told him, I told, I told my ex, I was like, uh, because he would constantly talk about sexual things and be like, oh, when are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? He's 18. I'm 15. When are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? And I'm like, uh, when we get married. <laughs> I would always switch the subject because I felt really uncomfortable just him talking about it. I was like, I'm not ready. Like, I, I'm not ready at all. I was like, you're going to have to wait till I'm 18 or when we're married. I would tell him that a lot. I told him I didn't want to. And so eventually I broke up with him. Then he cried. Then I ended up getting back with him. Um, not even a month later, he broke up with me. And I was like, oh goodness and he was like I need my phone back and I was like cool and like I literally it took me a day to get over him and I was over him like in that day and then I moved on and then um that's when I started experimenting with girls and that's when um I stopped going to church because I went to church and I told a friend that I think I like girls. And she told her mom, her mom told the pastor, the pastor had a service about how being gay was a sin. And so he made a whole service about how being gay was a sin that exact day. It was on Sunday. I told her on like Friday or whatever. And I was so scared. I sat at the back of the church because she told me, she's like, I told my mom and told pastor, I'm sorry. And I was like, why would you do that? You know? I never went back to church after that because he made a whole service about being gay with a sin. And um, I literally was scared. This man pulled me in the back of his podium after, like, when I, after that. He made an announcement. He said, Sister Martinez, I want to see you in my office before service is over. So he pulled me, and he had another brother go with him to the, in the back, like, in, in his office. It was him and other brother. These are grown men. I'm 15. I'm 15. And he was like, so what kind of sins have you acted? Have you done any type of sins? He was talking about like sexual things that I've done with with girls. He's like, what kind of sins have you acted on? You know, and I was like, I'm not gay. I'm, I'm straight. I have a boyfriend. And I, like, I was so scared. Like, I didn't want to, I was like, I'm not saying nothing. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, you know, that it's a sin, you know, and we can pray for you. And, you know, you can come to church and, you know, go da 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 And he was just talking about how, like, being gay was a sin and da, da, da. And he was just like, why are you, this man is like 60 something and I'm 15 and you're asking me about what kind of sins have I acted on. My parents, not even at the church, she's at home. I'm by myself. I am a minor with two grown men in this room. I was scared. I was literally scared. And we left the office and he was like, I want, I want to see you back here, you know, like, you know, and pray for you, whatever. And I was like, okay, pastor. Never went back to the church again. I was like, peace. I was out of that church. And um, I was gay and free. Because after that, I, f I came out that summer as completely gay. I experimented with this girl, stuff with her, and came out completely gay. Um, yeah. And then, so abuse was still happening with my mom. This is a time, too, where I was in girls counseling my sophomore year. And um, my friend had talked about her incident of a guy touching her while she was sleeping and it just memory started to come back and i was like i think this is happening to me and i thought i was hallucinating anytime it happened i thought it was just me like making things up in my own head because i would see him and i was like no maybe it's just a dream and i would and i it was like a feel you know what i'm saying like and i would see him doing these things and so i talked about it in counseling the counselor was like we're gonna have to make a report and i was like okay so she made it a report she told the police, the detective called me. The detective literally told me, we're going to need you to call him and confront him because it's not like, you know, a rape, uh, like a type of scenario. And I'm like, what? You want me to call my predator and talk to him and ask him why he did the things he did just to get him a yes or no? No. I'm scared to eat. Like, I don't even want to talk about it. I didn't even feel comfortable saying it in counseling. And so they dropped the case. They made, they made an allegation. They called them and like 
my friend texted me. She was like, why would you say this? You always tell me the truth. And I was like, it happened. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to ruin our friendship. Like, I love you. Like, I said, I told her. And I was like, I love you. I didn't mean to ruin our friendship. And she was like, I love you too. But I don't think we'll be able to hang out anymore. My heart broke. Because that was literally my best friend. My heart broke. And we didn't talk for, like, a couple years. And, uh, you know, and that happened. And all because I had to confront this dude. I'm not going to confront him. That's a grown man. Like, I don't even feel comfortable talking about it. Of course he's going to deny it. And so going into my summer school of my sophomore year, I started experimenting more with girls. And I just, I just became a whole, like, a ho-ho. Ho, ho, ho. Because I was like, gay okay, and free. Yay. And, um... The girl who lived with us when I was little, when I was like, she was, she was like a sister to me. She came out for me to my, cause we had lived on the South side now and we were, oh, I was 15 still. I was 15. We moved, when I'm, when we moved to the South side, I had, was about to turn 16, moved to the South side. And that's when I first, this is when I started getting back into drugs again. And um, during the summer, I was gone, I think sophomore year summer, I was gone for GCU and I was with my foster mom and I lived with her for that summer. I went back to my mom's house and um, I did, I experimented with meth. And um, it was one of the neighbors, her, her daughter smoked meth and I smoked black and then like uh, a black and mild, you know, the cigarette, not other stuff, but um experimental meth and then um i started doing weed again and this is when drugs and i wasn't with my mom during that summer so i when i came back my junior year i cut my hair a little bit shorter i was just like it's time to just come out masculine like because i was so scared of like i was so tired of my like I was self-conscious of my body. Um, I slept with another girl too. I slept, I think, with two girls that summer of my sophomore year. And she was an adult. She was a senior when I was a freshman, but when I was a sophomore or junior, going into my junior year, she was like 20 something. And I was like, I just turned 16. So I was like, whatever. I just was experimenting, whatever. I was like, whatever. I didn't care anymore. I, I went into my thought phases and I was like, screw it. At least I have control over who I want to sleep with now. You know, that's how I felt. And so we're going to stop here. We're going to stop at my junior year because this is where things keep turning and just get a little bit worse. Just when you think it's about to get great, it gets worse. I'm 16. It's my junior year. I'm out. I'm gay and I'm proud. And I have all that trauma built up. So we're going to see you guys in part five. So I'll see you on part five. Thank you for watching. And if you have any experiments like this or any trauma that you have went through, please comment below. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have an amazing day. Peace. Mm -hmm.